Today, we are reading Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, Book 1, Chapter 2. So, as last time, we are just going to jump right in, and at the end, we'll open up things for comments, and I'll give my own commentary, but we're just going to jump right in, and this is to make it easier on the viewer. Okay, so... Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, cha uh, Book 1, Chapter 2. <clears throat> what magic is, what are the parts thereof, and how the professors thereof must be qualified. Magic is a faculty of wonderful virtue, full of most high mysteries, containing the most profound contemplation of most secret things, together with the nature, power, quality, substance, and virtues thereof, as also the knowledge of whole nature, and it doth instruct us concerning the differing and agreement of things amongst themselves, whence it produceth its wonderful effects, by uniting the virtues of things through the application of them one to the other, and to their inferior suitable subjects, joining and knitting them together thoroughly by the powers and virtues of the superior bodies. This is the most perfect and chief science, that sacred and sublimer kind of philosophy, and lastly the most absolute perfection of all most excellent philosophy, foreseeing that all regulative philosophy is divided into natural, mathematical, and theological. Natural philosophy teacheth the nature of those things which are in the world, searching and inquiring into their causes, effects, times, places, fashions, events, their whole and parts also. And quote. Uh, <clears throat> the number and the nature of those things called elements what fire, earth, and air forth brings, from whence the heavens their beginnings had, whence tide, whence rainbow and gay colors clad, what makes the clouds that gathered are and black, to send forth lightnings and a thundering crack, what doth the nightly flames and comets make, that makes the earth to swell and then to quake, what is the seed of metals and of gold, what virtues, wealth, doth nature's coffer hold? All these things doth natural philosophy, the viewer of nature, contain, teaching us according to Virgil's muse, whence all things flow, whence mankind, beast, whence fire, whence rain and snow, whence earthquakes are, why the whole ocean beats, over his banks and then again retreats, Whence strength of herbs, whence courage, rage of brutes, all kinds of stone, of creeping things and fruits. But mathematical philosophy teacheth us to know the quantity of natural bodies, as extended into three dimensions, as also to conceive of the motion and course of celestial bodies. As in great haste, what makes the golden stars to march so fast? What makes the moon sometimes to mask her face? The sun also, as if in some disgrace. And as Virgil sings, <clears throat> How the sun doth rule the twelve zodiac signs, The orb that's measured round about with signs. It doth the heaven's starry way make known, And strange eclipses of the sun and moon. Arcturus also, and the stars of rain, the seven stars likewise, and Charles his wain. Why winter suns make towards the west so fast? What makes the nights so long ere they be past? All which is understood by mathematical philosophy. Hence by the heavens we may for know the seasons all, times for to reap and sow, when tis fit to launch into the deep, and when to war, and when in peace to keep, and when to dig up trees, and them again to set, so that they may bring forth the main. 
Now theological philosophy, or divinity, teacheth what God is, what the mind is, what an intelligence, what an angel, what a devil, what the soul, what religion, what sacred institutions, rites, temples, observations, and sacred mysteries are. It instructs us also concerning faith, miracles, the virtues of words and figures, the secret operations and mysteries of seals. And, as Apuleius saith, it teacheth us rightly to understand and to be skilled in the ceremonial laws, the equity of holy things, and the rule of religions. But, to recollect myself, these three principal faculties magic comprehends, unites, and actuates. Deservedly, therefore, was it by the ancients esteemed as the highest and most sacred philosophy. It was, as we find, brought to light by most sage authors and most famous writers, amongst which principally Zamolxes and Zoroaster were so famous, that many believed they were the inventors of this science. Their track, Abaris the Hyperborean, Carmondas, Damigeron, Eudoxus, Hermippus followed. There were also other eminent choice men as Mercurius, Trismegistus, Porphyrius, Iamblichus, Plotinus, Proclus, Dardanus, Orpheus, the Thracian, Gog, the Grecian, Germa, the Babylonian, Apollonius of Tiana, Os Thanes also wrote concerning this art, whose books being as it were lost, Democritus of Abdera recovered, and set forth with his own commentaries, besides Pythagoras, Empedocles, Democritus, Plato, and many other renowned philosophers, traveled far by sea to learn this art, and being returned, published it with wonderful devoutness, esteeming of it as it as a great secret. Also it is well known that Pythagoras and Plato went to the prophets of Memphis to learn it, and traveled through almost all Syria, Egypt, Judea, and the schools of the Chaldeans, that they might not be ignorant of the most sacred memorials and records of magic, as also that they might be furnished with divine things. Whosoever, therefore, is desirous to study in this faculty, if he be not skilled in natural philosophy, wherein are discovered the qualities of things, and in which are found the occult properties of every being, and if he be not skilful in the mathematics and in the aspects and figures of the stars, upon which depend the sublime virtue and property of everything, and if he be not learned in theology wherein are manifested those immaterial substances which dispense and minister all things, he cannot be possibly able to understand the rationality of magic. For there is no work that is done by mere magic, nor any work that is merely magical, that doth not comprehend these three faculties. Okay, <clears throat> so now we will get to the comments section, the three books of occult philosophy by, that was the three books of occult philosophy by Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, and uh, once again, that was book one, chapter two, so... Here I'm going to open up for comments. Um, so, this is how I'm going to do this. Oh, here before I get into the commentary, I wanted to let people know <clears throat> that for Patreon only, um, soon I'm going to be starting a very in-depth and long... Um, now, this is getting into modern magic. This is changing the subject a bit. Agrippa's classical magic. But um, for Patreon only, I'm about to start a very in-depth uh, tarot course. Um, that's just for people that subscribe to my Patreon. Um, for those that support my channel through subscribing to my Patreon, I'm going to give a pretty in-depth tarot course. And uh, that will be available to the public after a year, maybe. Probably. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, it's only available to Patreon subscribers for a year, but after a year, you know, everyone get access. 
Um, and then also, of course, here I am doing Agrippa. Um, so this is, uh, today we read Book 1, Chapter 2. So here once again, um, and then of course also I'm going to give a link to my Patreon for anyone that's interested. So I have that tarot course coming up. It's going to go very in-depth, really in-depth into the cards. It's going to focus mostly on the Thoth deck and uh, really get into uh, the Kabbalah and, and all of that, the Thoth deck. But again, that is modern magic, different topic. I just wanted to announce to my viewers that for Patreon only, that's coming up, and it's going to be a long, in-depth, like we're going to be going through, it's it's going to be months of work, months of material, um, a few different videos for each, like we're going to, we're going to be like in-depth, like path working and working through and looking at all the symbolism, um, so once again, that's for Patreon subscribers only. Once again, I'm monetizing my channel. I'm making it where I can do this for a living. Think of it this way. If if 400 people sign up for my $10 a month, whatever the thing, you know, 400 people do it, that's four grand a month, you know, so. Basically, I'm monetizing my content. However, I plan to make it available to everyone eventually. Okay. So just at first, it's only for Patreon to help me to monetize my channel. But after a certain time period, I'll probably release most of this material to the public. So, commentary. Book two, cha uh, book one, chapter two of Agrippa. Back to the classical magic. I just wanted to insert that shameless plug in there. All right. Hello, Constantino. Today we're reading Agrippa. Three Books of Occult Philosophy, book one, chapter two. We already read it. So now we're to the commentary. Clearly, Agrippa is dividing everything into three classes, and this is why we talked about this in chapter one. He divides the three books of occult philosophy well into three books. Why three books? Because these represent natural magic, celestial magic, and then divine magic. These three realms, the elementary, celestial, and divine. Here in chapter two, he refers to these as natural philosophy, uh, stones, herbs, plants, powers of stones, things like that, uh, stones and metals and plants and things, incenses and oils. That's the, the nat what Agrippa calls natural philosophy in this chapter. The celestial or astrological realm he refers to as mathematical philosophy, and then um, uh, theological philosophy being the divine realm. So, let me just read this, and it's interesting, you have to understand that this was written in the 16th century, literally written in the 1500s. <laughs> so, um, we did not have modern science, we have to keep that in mind. Back then, these were seen as the three types of philosophy. Natural sciences, like physics, things like that, um, all of these things, this was a natural philosophy, you know, uh, so let me read, so, okay, first let me uh, reread that first chapter here, so first of all, what is chapter two about, what magic is, what are the parts thereof, and how the professors thereof must be qualified, okay, Agrippa, here we are 500 years later, still listening to what Agrippa had to say. 500 years. What did Agrippa have to say? Magic is a faculty of wonderful virtue, full of most high mysteries, containing the most profound contemplation of most secret things, together with the nature, power, quality, substance, and virtues thereof, as also the knowledge of whole nature. And it doth instruct us concerning the differing and agreement. So basically, he's saying that it gives us that that magic includes the knowledge of the natural world and uh, the astrological realm. It includes all the sciences. Um, so the natural sciences and then the astrological realm, the cosmos was seen to be associated with magic and then the divine realm beyond. So the natural astrological or mathematical, and then the divine. These are the three divine realms. 
Um, and something I wanted to point out is that when you take a stone, let's say a ruby of Mars, this is just a little bit of another way to think about things. Um, now, just a little bit of a warning, this is a little bit more modern. Um, hold on just a second here. All right, so, um, so this is like combining all aspects of knowledge according to the Renaissance mind. What you have here are three worlds. Um, we have this world here that is the world of stones and plants and herbs, um, the natural world, what he calls natural philosophy. So we can use a stone like an onyx to attract Saturn, or a ruby for Mars, or an emerald for Venus. These are stones. This is the elemental, elementary realm. And in the celestial realm, let's say we take an emerald for Venus. We look at the celestial realm. This is world two. We look at uh, when Venus is well placed. Let's say, um, uh, let's say Venus in Taurus or Libra. Okay, and it's well aspected and fortunate. Okay, so that's the celestial realm. The divine realm is reaching through the 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 astrological sphere as a type of window to make access with the divine realm and then to pull or draw that energy to inhabit a talisman or to inhabit a ritual space momentarily to have some spirit communication. So this is how Renaissance magic a lot of times worked in this way. Um, so basically you could say that you're drawing the divine form into the matter or you're drawing the spirit into the materia. Okay. Another way to look at it is you are exalting the matter. You are in a certain sense performing the great work. When you unite the stone of Mars, Ruby, with the divine quality of Mars in the highest supreme realms, you are in a sense making a union of the divine and the mundane. You are spiritualizing matter and, uh, and, and materializing spirit. You are clipping the wings of the, 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 the eagle and uh, you are volatilizing the fix and fixing the volatile, okay? So that's just one way to look at it. Talismans are kind of the great work because you have a metal or a stone or a material object and you're calling down the divine. You're reaching up through the up through the ladder, <laughs> contacting the divine force and pulling that down. You're you, you're spiritualizing matter and materializing spirit in that sense. Um, so, so you can just for Agrippa, we we think of it like three sheaves. Okay, three sheaves. Okay, at the core, the center, well, from our perspective, we have this world here of stones, plants, minerals, animals, vegetables. Second world, astrological realm, and then the highest realm was the divine realm. Um, now, people today, obviously, Agrippa lived in a highly Christianized society, Christian and Jewish, mostly Christian, um, in the 16th century. Um, but how do we interpret this today? Do you have to be a Christian to use Agrippa's model? The answer is no. Uh, you don't have to be a Christian to use Agrippa's model. You could look at it as, as using stones and astrological timing to establish contact with an angel, or in a Judeo-Christian, a planetary archangel, or you could just as equally, let's say you want to work with... Uh, I don't know, some type of uh, deity like like Venus or Aphrodite or something like, or whatever quality at the right astrological timing and then to use the substance. You're using the same type of method. You're just plugging, instead of saying Archangel of Venus, you're saying Aphrodite or Ishtar or whatever. Now, that is a reinterpretation. I'm just pointing out that it, I think it's actually very important when we're going to talk about Agrippa that we bring up contemporary practices and that we realize that there are different magicians, different perspectives. Some take a highly Christian approach still or a highly Jewish approach. 
Some people take a pagan approach. So there's different ways to approach Agrippa. Okay. Now, um, so moving on with this. Um, so again, we're looking at the central world of the, of the elements. Our world here of, of metals and stones and plants. And again, this was in the 16th century. This was a type of science. So then what does he say? Uh, so what does natural philosophy do? Natural philosophy teacheth the nature of those things which are in the world, searching and inquiring into their causes, effects, times, places, fashions, events, their whole and parts also. You know, it's interesting that um, uh, Frances Yates, uh, in her amazing work, her, her seminal work, uh, Giordano Bruno and the Hermetic Tradition, you know, she talks about how, like, these types of added, these types of searches are what eventually led to the scientific revolution. You know, if it weren't for all these alchemists staring into their retort or these people staring up into the cosmos, you know, we wouldn't have modern science. Um, <clears throat> so, anyways, the number and nature of those things called elements would fire earth, air forth brings, from whence the heavens their beginnings had, whence tide, whence rainbow, and gay colors clad, would make it's the clouds that gathered are, and black send forth lightnings, and a thundering crack. Okay, so we're dealing with the... Uh, that and then we have the uh, celestial realm and then we have the divine realm so once again we're using astrology astrological timing and we're manipulating objects here through the print through using correspondences through stones and plants and things we're able to create a type of vessel to attract or draw down the divine qualities when the with the right astrological timing this was seen as most opportune to attract these forces think of the the alignment of the planets and all of this is a t creating a type of doorway to the divine realm beyond and then you have the divine realm i also want to point out that these three types of magic and please feel free to comment. Any of y'all have any thoughts on this chapter or on Agrippa, please feel free so that this becomes more of a dialogue instead of just me talking. I don't mind talking, but I just want everyone to feel welcome and, you know, if you want to talk. But, um, um, but um, dang it, what was I saying? I hate when I do that. Sometimes I veer off and then I forget whatever, where I was going with that. Um, I hate that. What was I saying? I hate that. So, um, drawing down divine... You're, you're basically drawing down divine virtues, okay? Do you have to literally believe in this model? No. You could look at the cosmos and this, this whole, like, astrological model and these stones and all that as a type of symbol... Uh, elaborate symbol system to aspect certain qualities... The traditionalists, hardcore traditionalists, <laughs> like I used to be, I, I still consider myself very much a traditionalist in many ways, but uh, the extreme, they're probably not going to care too much for this tarot background and me bringing in a lot of modern magic. But what we need to understand is when I talk about Agrippa, I try to make it relevant to everyone and for everyone to feel included. Um, so, yep, Agrippa. Three three books represent three three layers of reality, and if you link now, some people only work with elementary magic. Elementary magic is a type of magic within itself, and that's book one. So if you take a lot uh, a lot of folk magic, for example, they just use stones or herbs. They don't look at astrological timing. They're not invoking angels necessarily or divine powers. They may just take some. Uh, Five finger grass, put it in your pocket for a job interview, or carry a certain stone, or that's using the elementary world. It's elementary magic using oils. You don't have to invoke anything into it or, or use timing. Okay, you can just use elemental magic. The second world, celestial magic. This is where you get into like astrological talismans. You're gonna make a talisman when the planet is well placed that's another type of magic there's some people that mostly just work with this 
Now, technically, this is the next level up. They actually, usually they use, usually, usually, they also use elemental magic. So the celestial magic usually incorporates the uh, elemental, because you're using colors and stones and incenses and oils, perhaps, at the proper astrological timing. Then the third and final realm, you're getting to the divine realm. You're making in contact with an archangel, or some would say you can make contact with a, a, a god or goddess beyond the planet. So this is linking up these three realms, and this is what Agrippa talks about. This is the great classic, The Three Books of Occult Philosophy by Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. Um, book one was published in 1531, and then all three books were published together in 1533. So this is the great classic of the 16th century, um, The Three Books of Occult Philosophy. I'm actually going to give a link. Actually, I have a link in my uh, description. And, uh, yep, if anyone wants to buy a copy to follow along, if you don't already have a copy of Agrippa, um, I'm going to provide a link. Anyone that wants to buy a copy to follow along in these videos, uh, full disclosure, my links are commissioned. My Amazon links, they are commissioned, so I do earn a commission if you purchase through my links. Amazon links. And then also... Um, Yep, so there's that, and then like I said, um, I have that uh, course, and uh, that is it. I will see you guys in the next video. See y'all in Chapter 3. Thank you for stopping by, and uh, does anyone else have anything to sh uh, share on this? If you want, I'll give a shout out. Um, and I just want to point out that I try to make these videos quick to the point, get in, get out. Um, to make it easier for the viewer, those that just want to like listen to an audio book, maybe they don't want to spend two hours on Agrippa on one chapter. So, but anyways, so that's it. Um, if no one help has anything to input here, um, I will see y'all in the next video. In the next video, we're gonna be going into uh, we're gonna be going into some stuff. It's gonna be good. So, um, be sure and check out my Patreon, and um, I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.